and welcome to the third and final part of my tutorial on how you go about connecting a 4-bit binary counter wired to a timer and display the output on a 7-segment display. Everything is completed. Um, I'll still show you in sections here, explain the counter as best I can, and then uh, once it gets dark we can actually watch it count down on its own, which is what uh, you've all been waiting for. Logic involved in this part is a, quite a bit more complicated than uh, what I've given you an explanation of in the previous videos. Um, still try to give you a rough explanation of how the counter itself works. And in the comments below, I will give you some links to uh, the references that I use to figure out the quickest and easiest way to set up these gates. And if you have any interest in actually figuring out how all of this works, that would be a good place to start and just do some experimenting. It's starting to get dark, so I'll wait for it to get light, and then we'll run around in the counter, and I'll uh, kind of show you step by step how it works. All right, and before I show you the uh, counter itself, I'll give you a brief explanation of how binary counters actually work. What we have are four toggle flip-flops that are wired in series. You may have remember you may remember me mentioning latches in the uh, previous two videos. I had gotten myself confused. It's actually toggle flip-flops that we need. The way that a toggle flip-flop works is whenever it receives a positive input, the output changes state. So by stringing them together, we get a counter. What happens when I flip the switch that uh, was up there, there's this little bit of the circuit here that causes one change of the switch in either direction, either going on or off, to send a quick on pulse to the input of the first of the two flip-flops. As you can see with binary numbers here, um, what you have is every time the one position goes from 0 to 1 to 0. The next position higher goes to 1. Once it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 twice, the second position goes back to 0, meaning that the third position goes to 1 because the second position has gone from 0 to 1 to 0, and so on and so on. So it uh, continues to loop that way. By wiring these flip-flops in series, once the flip-flop controlling bit 1 goes on and then off again, it turns on the second of the toggles. Then when that goes off again, or when the second one goes off, the third one comes on. And it keeps going on and on that way. So, by the time that the fourth bit goes on. The first bit, which is the one, has gone off and on again a total of eight times. Bit two has done it four times, and bit three has done it twice, which, if you do the math, makes sense. Again, once it gets light, I'll actually give you a quick look at the counter itself and then I'll give you a bird's eye view of the top from the, for the entire project. Okay, and a quick look at the counter. In this little rectangle right here in front of me is one of the four, actually bit one of the four toggle flip-flops. The input comes in right here. Output over here. Then the output of this one for bit 1 goes right into the input of bit 2. Whenever the input on this toggle changes and goes from off to on, it changes the output here. If it's, on, if it's already on, it goes off. If it's off, it comes on, and it stays that way. When its output goes off, it still changes the display, but it doesn't do anything 
to affect the second bit. When it goes on, however, the second bit also changes state because it's received a positive input and it will change state. If it was already on, it will go off. Nothing will happen to the third bit. If it was off, it will go on. And cause a positive input on the third bit. Now, if you were paying attention, what I said was kind of backwards. When a positive in, when you have a positive output on bit two, that means it's a one, and you do not want bit three to change, which is why we actually do have inverters in between the output of the previous bit and the input of the successive bit. But this will continue to loop in a circle once it gets to 16 or, well, technically 15, it goes back to zero and all the inputs would be off. If you had a fifth bit, it would actually be a 16 where you would have one and then four zeros in binary. That's pretty much it for the counter. I'll give you a quick bird's eye view of the entire thing, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, and off in the distance, you can see the counter. You can just barely make out in front of that white board the blipping of the timer as it goes around in circles. Directly underneath me are the logic gates that uh, the 4-bit binary input is translated into the decimals. And right there we have the decimal decoders which show how each number actually appears on the display itself. Alright, and it's starting to get dark. I'll go ahead and show you part of what this thing can do. Right now I have the clock disabled so I can show you before I explain how the clock works it actually counting here now it's at zero we flip the switch it takes a second to update and we go to one and this kills my computer when all these circuits going off along with doing the video capture it doesn't like it all the lower frame rate is keeping it from doing some of the weird stuff it does when it transitions from number to number. It'll be interesting to see what happens when the timer is actually running. But as you can see, one flip of the switch, one change of the number. So what we do next is just wire up a timer that will pulse at a steady speed and basically do the job of flipping the switch on and off for me. We can sit back and watch it do its counting. And I'll explain now, um, this being a 4-bit counter, it actually counts from 0 to 15 or 1 to 16 depending on how you look at it. I only have logic gates set up to handle 0 through 9, so right now it is on 10, which if I was feeling motivated enough I would have set up the hexadecimal numbers so that we'd have A, B, C, D, E, and F displayed, but I am not going to do that because this already takes up way too much space. What I also could have done is wire some logic gates in there that would have reset the counter back to 0 once it passed 9. Again, I am not going to do that because I'm lazy. I'll leave that to somebody else who decides to try doing this project on their own a little bit later. Also, there is a flaw somewhere in one of my logic gates that allows a 7 to happen even though another bit should be on for that, to, or should be forced to be off for that to happen. But uh, we'll ignore that. Everything that happens between 0 
or everything that happens between 10 and 15, I'm not concerned with. But there we are back to zero. Give you a explanation of the clock once it gets to be light again here. And then we'll finally turn this thing on with the clock, chill out, and watch it do its thing. And very, very quickly, you're looking at the uh, side of the timer here. Basically what it is, is a odd number of not switches wired up in series. So what happens is when one torch turns the next off, it turns the next on and turns the next off, and they just chase themselves around in a loop. The more you have wired up together, the longer it takes for it to go around that loop, and therefore the longer between when the torches turn off and on again. You can do this with a minimum of five and have it stay stable. Um, I have, I think, 15 wired together here so that it goes slow enough for the uh, display to have time to update with all the switching that needs to go on in the background. All right, and here we go for the final show. I do have this thing set up a couple of different ways. Um, right now with that switch up by where we were sitting that I was flipping to manually rotate the numbers on, this is locked in the on position. Um, this switch right here controls the timer. So we've got the timer pulsing away. With the switch up there on, locks this on so nothing is going to change. That way I can get back up there, flip the switch, and we can watch it counting without it uh, starting while I'm down here. Which will take a moment because my frame rate is very, very bad with all of this stuff flipping away. All right, here we go. a little bit smoother when I'm not doing the video capture and again a 7 is going to pop up that we can just ignore but we're back to 0 runs a lot like I say a lot smoother when I'm not doing video capture I could smooth it out a little bit by adding some more loops into that into that timer circuit but I'm not going to bother you can uh, you can see it working so that is all it takes. <laughs> I think I uh, I didn't really keep track, but I know I used at least 20 stacks of redstone and probably twice as many bits of uh, bits of dirt in getting this set up. It was quite the project, but it was worth it. Um, got a couple of other projects in mind. I think the next thing I'm going to work on is a random dice rolling program. Uh, that'll roll two dices, kind of display a dice face in place of the seven segment display that we have here, and then have an indicator as to which of the two dice rolled higher. So I'll try to explain how I go about doing that. That way those of you that frequent multiplayer servers can institute a electronic form of gambling, which I'm sure will keep you guys even busier. But, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you were able to, for the most part, follow what I was doing. Um, again, I have several more projects in mind. I'm always looking for new ones. So, thank you for watching.